Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews. Today we have another Mattel review, one that, as far as a sauropod goes, will fit a little better in screen than the Brachiosaurus did the other day. This time we have the Amargosaurus, the Dino Rivals Jurassic World Amargosaurus. This is fairly new to me, but a lot of people have actually received theirs previously. Just unfortunately for me, mine was kind of held up on Amazon for a long, long time. I pre-ordered this in June, and many other people received it before me. Mine just for some reason did not want to ship, probably because Amazon is absolutely terrible at actually providing the products that they put on their website sometimes for us to buy, especially when it comes to the Jurassic World line. It has been an absolute nightmare trying to buy stuff from Amazon. But regardless, I now have the Amargosaurus here. I am excited beyond belief to take a look at it. It's one of the figures that I was really the most looking forward to, I think more so than many others of the Jurassic World line, because I am a huge fan of Amargosaurus, and it's such a very cool, obscure species to get as far as the Jurassic World toy line goes. So again, I'm beyond excited. I can't wait to take a look at it. As far as the packaging goes, you've got this standard run-of-the-mill Dino Rivals packaging for the Jurassic World toy line. Then on the back, you've got a very nice image of the Amargosaurus, kind of giving you an idea of just how beautiful it is. And then down here in the corner, we've got an image of a few of the other dual attack figures like the Stegosaurus, the Suchomimus, and the Quetzalcoatlus. Such a very cool lineup of figures and species in this Jurassic World toy line. So let's go ahead and break this open and get a look at it. So here is the card. Pretty nice looking image of the Amargosaurus, nothing special, it's just kind of standing there actually looks pretty much exactly like it does on the toy itself along with the stats and of course Dino Rivals Jurassic World on the back and then here is our Amargosaurus and out of the packaging it really really does look quite nice however when I first got it out I did notice one little issue with it which is something that we've been dealing with for a very very long time and I will get to here in a minute but I think overall, as far as the overall first glance goes, it definitely looks really, really appealing, really beautiful. Not quite exactly to what you would see on an actual Amargosaurus, but still really quite fun as far as a Jurassic World figure goes because you can't expect complete scientific accuracy when it comes to a Jurassic World or a Jurassic Park toy because the dinosaurs themselves in the films and everything aren't accurate. They're not full-blown dinosaurs, they are mixed with other species of animals to create the dinosaurs so you're not going to get exactly what a dinosaur would look like so it can always be forgiven when it comes to a Jurassic World toy if it doesn't look exactly like the actual animal would but again it really does look quite nice at first glance I'm super excited to take a look at it with you guys so let's go ahead and do that right now so starting up here at the head sculpt I think one of the main issues which we've been having for a very long time can be picked out and seen right away and that is the eye placement is garbage absolutely terrible the eye is not even really on the area where the eye is so much and if you want to see what can be even worse than that we'll turn it around now his eye is almost down on his cheek. I don't know how something like this could happen because honestly that is really really bad and a huge letdown for me when it comes to this figure. It's honestly so bad that I think I now have to reorder the figure, buy it again because this is not the type of thing that I would like to have in my collection. I would like one that actually has decent eye placement and for the most part throughout the entire time I've been buying the Mattel toy line I've gotten pretty lucky, I will say, for the majority of the figures as far as the eye placement goes. I think the only other one that I can really recall having a huge problem with was their Stegosaurus, the initial Stegosaurus. And this is really the first time I've had a pretty big issue with the eyes, but these ones are really, really bad. So I'll have to look into getting another one, which is going to be a pain in the butt because it took long enough to get this one. But regardless, we're here to actually look at the sculpt and not just complain about the eye placement. As far as the head sculpt goes, I think it does look really quite nice. Again, not exactly what you would see on an Amargosaurus. It does look a little bit off in comparison, but it's not too far off. I think it does definitely have a somewhat decent appearance to it. There's lots of very nice sculpt and detail included. Really beautifully sculpted as far as the minute details go. You can see that the head does articulate right there which is really quite cool to have that kind of articulation. We didn't have that on the Brachiosaurus, which I don't really think it would have worked 
very well on the Brachiosaurus, but it is really nice to see it here on the Amargosaurus. The mouth and everything looks to be sculpted really quite nicely. As far as the paint goes, I think that this brown, the primary brown that they've used, is definitely quite nice. And you can see that you've got some red and some gray kind of splotched all over the head up here. And I like that it is different on this side in comparison to this side. As far as the reddish color goes, you can see that it is quite different. It doesn't look exactly the same. And that's kind of what you would expect to see on a real living animal. It's not probably going to look exactly the same on both sides, so that is really cool. I do actually quite like this pink coloration here, this reddish color around the eye and the gray along with this brown. I think everything is a really nice choice of colors, even though it does look a good bit like the Chat May Amargosaurus, but regardless, it does still look really, really nice on this Mattel figure. As you start to run down the neck, you can see lots of skin wrinkling going on, lots of skin folding, and the spines that extend off of the neck and the back of the Amargosaurus look really, really cool. They are a blackish color, and then you've got kind of a red splotchiness within here, but I think that helps to give it a very nice, very striking look. For some reason, the red is a little bit glossy. You can see it shine there as I turn it. I don't know why. I would have preferred it not be glossy, but at the same time, it does help to give it a somewhat striking look and really draw your attention to that area. If the actual spikes here sticking out those spines don't do it enough, then that reddish color should definitely draw you in. This also has a glossy effect around the eye, and again, Mattel has done that on a few different occasions actually with their figures, and I'm never really a huge fan of it. And that's the same thing here, I don't really like the gloss effect too much, but it's definitely not that bad, that's for sure. And you can see that even on the inside there is some of that red splotchiness as well. If we come down the rest of the neck area, you can see lots of wrinkling, lots of cracks and creases in the skin all over the place. You get down here, you can make out the shoulder blade a little bit there. And the very nicely muscular front legs, really beautiful muscle tone, along with some extremely nice skin texture. I think that the overall skin texture is really, really nice. Really gives you that large animal feel that you would expect to find on an animal like this. You can see the elbow is present there. One thing that is pretty shocking, however, is that the nails are painted. That is crazy. Mattel painted the nails on this, and look how much better it looks just having the paint on the nails. I wish they would do this with every figure. It honestly would be amazing to have that on every figure because it looks so incredibly nice. Beautiful gloss applied to the nails as well, helping to make them shine like real nails would. So that right there is just a step above most Mattel releases simply by adding paint to the nails. Such a very small addition, but man, it can make a world of difference. When you come back into the stomach, you can see the rib cage there protruding from the skin. You can also get a sense of the movement of the dinosaur a little bit there with the way the skin is reacting. Very nice skin texture again up here. You've got kind of like an osteoderm type appearance, a real bumpy appearance the closer you get to the upper part of the animal. And again, the spines that run along the back here, along with this red splotchiness, runs all the way down until here, and then the red stops, but you still get the spines down onto the tail a little bit more. Of course, the red would stop before the tail. That tends to happen a lot when it comes to variations of color on Mattel figures. Really nice muscle tone here in the thigh right there. As you come down, you can see the kneecap is present. Huge calf muscles. And again, the beautifully sculpted feet with the nicely painted nails. Well, they're not painted on the underside, but regardless, they still look really nice from up here, which is awesome. Beautiful skin texture as we lead down the tail. You can see some of the articulation, which does sport quite a bit of articulation here when it comes to the tail. You might take notice of the fact that this brown is a slightly different shade than the end here of the tail, which Mattel does tend to do quite often when it comes to their figures. They have slightly different shades sometimes for the legs. Actually, you can see it here. This front leg is a slightly different shade than the body is. The rear leg doesn't appear to be, though, which is weird, because normally, if one leg is, they all are, but that's not the case with this Amargosaurus. But again, as far as the sculpt, it's pretty much the same on this side as it was on the other side. Everything looks fantastic as far as the sculpt goes. The paint is really nice. I love the tones of color they've used. Love the nails being painted. I like this black splotchiness that runs all over the back with a very cool, very realistic looking design. It does end before the tail, but it still looks really, really good. So overall, I think that this is an incredibly nice Amargosaurus for the Jurassic World toy line. Something that I did not expect to get. There is the Jurassic Facts app there. 
the code if you would like to apply this to your collection. But again, this is a figure, a species that I did not expect to get, but boy am I excited that we did. As far as the size goes on the Amargosaurus for a height, the highest point will probably be the spines here in the neck. You're looking at about 7 inches or 18 centimeters. And for a length from the snout there to the tail, about 14 and a half inches or about 37 centimeters. So it really is quite the large size. Definitely a very nice sized figure. You see this continuously with the Mega Dual Attack figures as they are normally pretty darn big. That follows through here with this Amargosaurus. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex who is attempting to climb up on the back of the Amargosaurus to go for a piggyback ride. But hopefully this should be able to give you a pretty good idea of the size of the figure. It's much larger than most Jurassic World figures as it does make the Papo Rex look quite small. And he's no slouch himself, he is a decent sized figure so the Amargosaurus really being quite a bit larger definitely shows you that this is a sizable figure. And for another size comparison there is Robert Muldoon standing there like he's never seen his gun in his entire life holding it out in front of him looking at it like what do I do with this? But regardless, you can see now, next to the Amargosaurus, the size comparison of the human characters with the Amargosaurus in the Jurassic World toy line. As far as articulation goes, I did say that we've got the articulation here in the head. We've also got the articulation in the neck, which is also one of the action features. We've got the front leg here, back legs, of course both sides. The rear legs do come out away from the body, as well as going in. The front legs do as well. So you can make him look like he's trying to fly. And then you've of course got articulation in the tail in two different spots. But again, these are basically for the action features. So the first action feature would be the head strike, which I guess he's trying to headbutt people or dinosaurs or something. And then with the tail, you've got the tail strike. Both work pretty darn well. The action features of my Mega Dual Attack figures do normally work quite well. And that's the same here with this Amargosaurus. One thing that is nice as far as the articulation goes and the action feature is that you do have to press down on the spines, but luckily it's a rubbery type feel, so almost like a real feel, and that's the same that you get up here on these neck spines here as well, so it's not going to hurt your finger. Hopefully pressing down on this too much won't deform the spines for you in the future. I don't really know if that will happen or not, but at least it is a softer feel and you won't be stabbing your fingers or anything on that. So this Mattel Jurassic World Amargosaurus is really, really nice. It's definitely a beautiful looking figure, a very cool obscure species that I did not expect to get a figure of in the toy line, but Mattel continues to impress me with all the different species, the obscure ones that I don't expect to get figures continuously getting made, so I am super thankful that they are in fact searching out obscure species like this and giving us fans the figures that we would love to have like this Amargosaurus. It is definitely a huge letdown that the eyes are so terribly placed. They are really, really bad. Probably the worst out of any Mattel figure that I've ever owned. And that is very, very upsetting considering how much I wanted this figure. Hopefully I'll be able to get a hold of another one and it won't be so bad. Maybe Walmart will carry this. I'll be able to actually buy one in store and see the eyes ahead of time. Because buying one from Amazon is continuously a gamble when it comes to getting one that the eyes are perfectly placed. I think the sculpt and detail of this is really beautifully done. Everything looks great as far as the very minute detailing goes. The Mattel toy line continues to get better and better when it comes to their sculpts. Not that they've ever been any type of a slouch in the past because they've always delivered incredible sculpts in my opinion, but this Amargosaurus seems even better than previous releases and it really is fantastic looking overall. I think the paint application aside from the eyes is also really beautifully done. Everything looks to be applied very nicely, very naturally. Nothing looks like paint on a figure. I think it all nicely looks like body color. It does include some very cool articulation, which is always something that is awesome to have on any figure. I do love articulated figures, and you do find quite a significant amount of articulation in this Amargosaurus, along with two very cool action features with the head and tail strike. So if you're buying this to play with, you've got some very fun playability features with it, but if you're buying it just to have as a figure for your collection and maybe display, there is a decent bit of posability that you can pull off with the figure as well. Definitely a very appealing looking color scheme. I think all the colors they chose also look very natural. Nothing looks out of the range of what I would expect to see on a sauropod like this. And I really do like the striking type of a reddish color that is up there on the 
spines that stick out of the neck. I think that looks really nice and kind of what I would expect to see on an animal like this. So overall, aside from the eyes, this is a beautiful Mattel figure. And let's not forget the fact that they painted the nails. So everyone give Mattel a round of applause for that. And also, I will say that they did a great job on this Amargosaurus overall. So if you do want to buy one of these, I will put a link in the description to where I purchased mine on Amazon. So you can purchase yours there and hopefully it won't take many, many months to ship like mine did. So check the description, go buy this Amargosaurus, but before you do that, don't forget to please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of any future videos, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.